We're here at uh, Crow Canyon Interpretive Area. This is an area also under the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Land Management. And there are some fabulous rock art here. I truly believe this depiction of holy people, of yay figures, of images of Ghana Skitty, the humpback god, is iconography. It's like the stained glass in the churches of medieval Europe, and that these figures uh, are, are bringing it forward and bringing it to life uh, for the people in terms of their cultural identity, and people who only have an oral tradition. I have to point out that it is, it's not hieroglyphics, it's not picture writing, it is symbolic imagery, and it does have meaning, uh, but in some cases, maybe can only be accurately interpreted by the person who made it their very closest associates. By probably in the 1600s and on in the 1700s, they are developing this identity of Navajos, uh, and this is our culture, these are our religious figures, this is our iconography, and they're truly bringing it to life here. This series of motifs here is pretty interesting. Um, all the images here, I think, uh, are carved probably by Navajo folks. Uh, we have a series of images that are very, very similar. Uh, notice the uh, figures that have uh, the fringe from the facial area, probably fringe from a mask. There's fringe hanging down from the arms, uh, potentially fringe or ribbons. And we see a variety of those carved here. Almost all of these particular motifs that we see depicting this particular character are here in this area of what we call the main panel. Um, I've heard this uh, image interpreted as fringe mouth uh, with the fringe hanging from the mask in the facial area. I also have uh, seeing this interpreted as uh, black god. There are a series of images that actually are carved here and then back in to this cleft in the exposed bedrock, including one that is way up at the top where you would have had to shimmy up between the two sections of exposed bedrock and then, uh, and then wedge yourself in to carve up there. Notice how stylized, how beautifully done this is. Um, you know, artists have different skill levels. And here you have the eyes are well defined. You have the kilt, the uh, calves are eroding off. Um, an elaboration on the upper part of the torso, the fabulous headdress, um, bow, probably arrow, could be a rattle, but probably arrow on that side. Coming up here to a very important part of the main panel area, we see a composite of images here depicting a number of different motifs, uh, maybe carved over time, and it's very, very spectacular in terms of this composition that we see here on the main panel. I, I think what appear to be combs here are probably uh, clouds. Um, uh, these could be, next to it, these squiggly lines could be lightning. This uh, image and, uh, and carving of a corn plant is so typically Navajo, coming out of the cloud, two ears of corn. Uh, we see that time and time again in terms of depictions of the corn plant. If you look to the right of that, uh, Ghana Skitty, the humpback god his scepter, his uh, sheep horn headdress, uh, the, uh, the pack with maybe corn inside, the rainbow that lines the pack on his back, the feathers coming off that, the uh, stylized calves. Um, this is a classic image of the humpback god, Ghana Skitty.
I'm very intrigued by the images of the riders, which appear to have flat brimmed hats, brandishing sabers on the horse. We do know that the Navajos engaged Roque Madrid in two pitched battles here in 70, 1705, and I, and I think that it's possible that this depiction is of what the Navajos saw of Spanish riders on horses in 1705. Is this the Roque Madrid panel? I think it's highly likely. Navajos seek a cultural identity here and that their uh, religion is, is sort of uh, taking shape and, 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 and forming and being conceptualized. I think what they're doing is bringing it to life.